Welcome to the Sunbird Crochet Podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from Germany. talk to you about two finished objects. Then I also have works in progress for you. An old finished project which I took out of a wardrobe again because I have more plans for it. There's also a finished painting project and I've been planting some seeds. I hope you're going to enjoy this episode. Thank you for returning and for all the new subscribers. So let's start right away. Today I'm wearing the Nalia wrap. This is a pattern by the Australian crochet designer Shara underscore made on Instagram. So let's start with finished projects. I've got two of those. This is the first one. It's a cowl and it's my own design. It's not ready for publishing, but I wrote all my notes down. And as you can see, it's not color work this time. I call it Holly, R-O-L-L-I, which is a short name for a turtleneck sweater <laughs> in German. can't get enough of it. The colors are more subtle than Vanalia wrap for instance. I have been using my advent minis from last Christmas and I finished it off with black post half double crochets US terms. Which would be black post half trebles in UK terms. So this is the first finished project. I'm going to wear this later. The next finished project kind of jumped at me last weekend. How this happened is that last weekend there was the Zoom meeting of a Crochet Circle podcast group, the Crochet Clan, and Tamara, who is Crafty Escapism on Instagram. She reminded us, or rather inspired us to take part in the Stitches for Survival crochet plan to make a huge scarf. Everyone is making a 60 centimeters times 100 centimeters rectangle and this is going to be joined to make a huge scarf and there's going to be lettering on it and it's all about climate. It's all about raising awareness about climate issues ahead of a COP26, which is going to happen in November in Glasgow in Scotland. So what I did was I crocheted a corner to corner rectangle using yarn from Stash. And it's supposed to be either green or blue, no other colors and I've chosen to make mine in the color blue. This is three yarns held together and it gives a mild effect. I started in one corner, you start with a chain six and then you do double crochets US terms in the third stitch from the hook, from the loop and in the last two as well, so three, the first, <laughs> how do I explain it? I think I'm going to link down below to 
one or two of the many video tutorials which are available on YouTube already. So it grows like this and once you reach the 60 centimeters on one side you start you stop increasing and then it's growing in that direction parallel and once you reach the one meter you stop increasing on that side as well and then it grows back together and then you have a rectangle. I'm still debating with myself if I should put some appliques or flowers or things like that or some letters on it already. But I think I'm going to wait because Faye said or mentioned that she might talk about this in her next episode as well. And um, I think I'm going to wait for what she has to say about it. There might be some organization which will make our lives easier and which will all bring our efforts together within the crochet clan. So let's see what's going to happen there. We have plenty of time for making rectangles because as I said, it's going to be in November and I think the Stitches for Survival, which is also a hashtag on Instagram, is going to give us time until September and then it's going to be joining time. Yes, so that's my second finished object. Now, works in progress. I've got plenty, as you know. I just wanted to give you a quick update. First of all, the project with a white mountain goat wool, which is a rustic wool. I ripped back where I went wrong. And this this is where I am right now. And the pattern I'm using is this one here. And God knows when I will have time for working on it again. And still on my hook is my daffodil sweater. haven't done anything with it. It's a lovely project, but time, I need time. Then I would like to talk to you about project plans. Um, you'll see this one here. That's the Jupiter sweater or Jupiter crop from Boiland Knitworks. And hers is obviously a knit design, but I've turned this into a crochet sweater. I call it the wine dot sweater because the inspiration was a certain type of chicken or poultry and I think the chicken race or hen race is the wine dot. That's why I call it that. This is finished object but I wanted to show you um, again my passion for colorwork crochet sweaters and this is another one you might recognize this it's the Soldotna sweater or knitted version would be the original Soldotna sweater I've made it into crochet And I made a faux eye cord neckband according to the tutorial by Normal Stitches, Sandra Gutierrez. And I had called it finished, but, but I never actually wear this. That's because it doesn't have sleeves, it's very short and I do prefer long sleeves. So my plan for this one is to add in the same, same wool, I'm going to add the two sleeves and if I have enough left, then I'm also going to add some of, I'm going to rip back the, 
the hem there and, and then I'm going to add more length to the sweater and then it will be ready for wearing this summer. This is my first plan and the second plan is also for the blanket finish along for Sophie, a spring snowflake podcast, because as I was going through all my blankets, I found that I have another one unfinished. It's the Amenzi block slash throw a pattern design by Jen Tyler. I've shown it to you recently, but I found, I actually noticed that I only finished up until part four and part five is still waiting. And there might be part six, I'm not sure, but it needs finishing. So this is the corner where I left off. There's still <laughs> some threads to be sewn in. And I'm a huge fan of her designs. They are very colorful, but you could also make this in one or two colors only. So this is another plan I have got. And what else have I been doing? I've been painting. I took out my acrylic paints and I had a cardboard. Remember I bought some wooden frames and they had some cardboard here inside, which I didn't need anymore. So what I did was I used those two, or this one to start with, I used it for painting in acrylics on it. And this is, this is a painting I've done. I also put a varnish on it, that's why it's so shiny. And I'm very happy with the top, with the protea flower. Not so happy with the vase. Looks like a painting of a child. <laughs> but I do like the protea flower. And this was very much inspired by the art of Wanda Comrie, who's in Western, she's living in Western Australia. I've got it down here so that I don't forget. And you can find her on Instagram as Wanda Comrie. I'm going to put her name up here. And I think her artwork is really beautiful. It's outstanding. I don't really have the words for it. Let me just, like this one here, I don't know if this will pick it up. Here, this one, that's a protea in a vase, and here's one as well. Beautiful. And you know, <laughs> proteas are really, I, I, I just love them. If you can't be a rose, then be a protea. Yes, and my obsession is becoming worse. So what I did was, and this is incoming, I've bought some seeds. And it's quite difficult to get seeds here in Germany from exotic plants like protea. And I also ordered a couple of other exotic seeds. And I hope this is really going to grow. Uh, obviously, I will probably grow old alongside. <laughs> so this is the King Protea. And for this one, I had to soak the seeds in uh, water and wood ash. It's 100 milliliter water and a tablespoon of wood ash. I actually got the ash from my sister who has a open fireplace so she saved some of the ash for me and I mixed it into the water and then I soaked the seeds in for 24 hours and then I was able to plant them yesterday into little pots at least 12 centimeters in diameter and yes this is going to be a 
project which will take a while but I will keep you updated if I will be successful. So this is the first the first seed but I've also ordered Australian what's it Calistemon citrinus which is this bush here it's like a pipe cleaner and then I've got a New Zealand Christmas bush and a snow eucalyptus uh, the snow eucalyptus is currently the seeds are in my fridge because I'm pretending or I'm trying to fool them into believing that there is snow and uh, it's cold and apparently that helps them to germinate and to become beautiful eucalyptus trees later. So we will see. That's all from me today. I hope you're going to have a lovely week. I'm going to talk to you soon and if you want to talk to me live then please join the Mighty Networks group of the Crochet Clan. This is not my group obviously, this is Faith's group and it's all her doing and she runs the Crochet Circle podcast. I do like to give her lots of credit because she is really pushing crochet to the forefront. Thank you Faye. You know that I really love being part of a crochet clan. And it's not an exclusive club. Please come and join us. So, plans for today. I'm going to go straight into my home office. That's why I'm feeling a little bit rushed. And yes, there might be crochet happening at the end of this day. Keep well, keep safe. I'm going to see you soon. Bye. P.S. This is how it looks like when I'm wearing it. <laughs>